And what's going on, everyone? So in the last video, we created a really basic just starter Xcode project, single page project. Uh, we created a Git repo. We initialized that Git repo. Like I said, I don't like to save it on the desktop, so I saved it in uh, a folder. I always just name it SRC for source. And then, because I have a lot of projects, uh, I put it in a, another folder called Kojo. And then the last thing that we did was we set up our Git ignore file. So I always do this in all of my projects. The Git ignore file allows us to uh, like just automatically uh, ig ignore certain files. Like we can put whatever we want in there. Uh, so if we open it up, we could put things like, so let's open it up. Uh, so, uh, we used, uh, first of all, we used that, uh, get ignore.io website, uh, to auto generate a get ignore. So we said, we don't care about things from Mac OS X. So there's like a hidden file. It's an operating system file called the DS store, which is just thumbnails. We don't need to be uploading those to GitHub all the time. There's a couple of other ones like that. Um, things like Objective-C and Swift specific files or things for like app packaging. When we're using Xcode um, and we generate whatever, whatever file behind the scenes, whatever file that the iOS is packaged up into, we don't actually wanna uh, save those files. So uh, like that's, that's exactly what we're doing. Like, so these, these things are just comments telling us these are the files that we don't care about. So you don't have to understand what's happening in here, but let's say if we had a, a specific file in this directory, just called, uh, you know, like passwords, passwords.txt, you probably wouldn't want to store that up in your repository. So this, by putting this in the git ignore before we commit this file passwords.txt, then it won't save that passwords.txt. Um, so again, we don't really have to care about the specific rules. That's why I like using that git ignore. I don't touch this too much. There's just no reason to auto generate one right from the start and then ignore stuff ignore ignore additional stuff. If you need to for right now, you're not really going to, uh, so in this course or like in this episode, we're going to kind of, again, we're going to start learning about that UI stack view, but let's first look at the problem that we're trying to solve. So let's say we have a couple of buttons. So I'm gonna add some buttons to my screen. We should be pretty familiar, at least with the basics of auto layout. Uh, so I'm gonna add a couple of buttons to the bottom of the screen here. Give them a little margin. Okay. Uh, control click, I'll control click and uh, create a constraint to another button. So if I add some horizontal spacing, let's say I want these to be equal width with like 16, uh, uh, like 16 spacing in between. So if I put 16 right there, you can see like the constraints are kind of red right now because uh, the buttons aren't stretching, the, the buttons themselves aren't stretching. So I'm going to add another constraint and I'll just force them to have equal widths. And then now in this case, these are two buttons that have equal widths. Uh, let's, let's actually change the color so we can see, see them a little bit better. We actually want to see the, uh, we see like the actual borders, like how, how that they're actually stretched out. We'll change these two. change the text color. So we can see that, that the buttons are filling up the space because they, they have that auto layout, if we were to use a different screen, like if we were to put this on an iPad, we see that they're also stretched, which is in this case, that's, that's kind of what I want. Uh, let's go back, pick something else. Okay, so that's easy, no problem there. What happens if I wanna add another button, right? So I wanna add another button, kind of Put it in there, squeeze it in there somehow. Ooh. All right, let's give it that same horizontal spacing. Horizontal spacing. I want this one to have equal widths as well. Okay, it already really doesn't like this. 
it's it's hard. So I'm going to have to delete some of those constraints. Uh, I can't have I can no longer have that be 16. Right. So again, I, I really have to kind of play around with it. Uh, I can work on it to get it right that first time. It's probably easier if I would have done it the first time. Uh, but the problem is we're adding buttons as we need it. We have to really kind of reconfigure everything. Uh, and it becomes be uh, even worse if I want to have four buttons in there. Uh, and then like, you know, making sure that the spacing amongst all four buttons is also consistent. It becomes really kind of a hassle. And it becomes even more difficult if the thing that I want to do is add buttons depend on depending on some feature of the user. So I've had, I've worked on apps, let's say like they're ma somebody's managing business licenses or something. And if they have only one business, there might be, there might be two buttons, but if they have three businesses or more, they might have three or four buttons, right? So I need to add these buttons actually while the app is running after I've figured out information about the user. So doing it this way becomes a big hassle. You have to start adding constraints at runtime as well. We really don't want to do any of that. So let me actually just, well, we're not going to do that. That's basically, that's basically it. So let's add three buttons again. We're going to handle all of these situations, but I'm going to show you how easy it is with a stack view. Okay. So let's, let's just set up the colors again, just so we can see everything. Actually, I can just highlight all of these. Make them all red and make them all white. Oh, make them all white. Okay, so we got these three buttons. Uh, now, what I can do to put them inside a stack view is a container view, which means I can put, like it can hold child views. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to editor. There's multiple ways of doing this, but I'm gonna go up to editor. The easiest way to do it is go to embed in and put it in a stack view, okay? And now you can kind of see there's this outline of a container here and, and all three of the buttons automatically lined up. I have this new view over here in my hierarchy called the stack view and I can open that up and you can see my buttons all right there, okay? So now let's make sure that stack view is selected. I'm gonna add some constraints. Okay. And now this is where we're going to have to start learning about some different options. But you can see one is kind of bigger than the other. The stack view has a couple of different properties. You can see that even up in the corner, it says, hey, the constraints aren't fully satisfied. It doesn't really like this at all. So oh, the thing that we can do is come up to the stack view options. So again, make sure stack view is selected. Make sure we have uh, this this thing's selected in our inspector. And then I'm gonna to go to distribution. And there's a couple of different properties that we can look at. But let's just say fill equally, okay? So now all of those buttons are automatically the same width. The spacing is automatically the same. We can actually change that spacing if we want. So I'll make that 16, right? And there we go, we have those buttons. If I need to add a fourth button, actually let's just, look at it on this. So on iPad or larger screens, it's gonna behave exactly the same. So, and let's give these a little bit better names so we can see what's happening. I'm naming these based off of what else we're gonna do in this project. So add, remove and orientation. And now that, now that we have these, so we'll, we'll check out a couple of things here. Um, now that we have these different size titles, we can actually take a look and we can see, so fill is trying to fill, it's trying to have them all fill uh, the, entire, the entire parent space, but um, they don't all fit obviously, right? Like that's why like that doesn't work. Uh, so they're all trying to, they're all trying to fill, but this one is because it's the, the first, child, it's taking up the most space. So we can, like I said, we can fill equally. We already saw that. We can fill proportionally, right? And we can see add. So now the 
it's proportional based on the size of the text, right? So that's why in this case, orientation is bigger than remove, which is bigger than add. Okay, we can give them uh, that still that just that equal spacing and it's equal, but uh, it's the size of the buttons aren't equal anymore, right? And then equal centering is just, just distributing those, like distributing where the centers are correctly. For what I wanna do, I just wanna make them just equally sized buttons. Uh, we can change the axis, which it is stacked on. Uh, so it can be horizontal, horizontal or vertical. Obviously in this case, I wanted it horizontal, but we can do the same thing with um, a vertical stack as well. Or, or yeah, a vertical stack. So now the buttons are stacked vertically. Right now you can see that their alignment, again, we have a lot of control over this. So their alignment is that leading edge. We could make it center, right? We could fill, right? Center or trailing, things like that. So we have a lot of control without having to manage all of those constraints. I'm gonna go back to horizontal um, I'll just mark it as the center. You can't really tell that much, but I'll mark it as the center. But then really quick, I just wanna add a new button, okay? So I'm gonna add a new button between add and remove. And then you can see it added that, it shrunk the other buttons, obviously orientation, uh, that text no longer fits, but it put that button, let's actually just look at that. Let's change the color it made that button have the exact same equal uh, equal space. It filled the button equally, even though like, or like without any additional work basically. And then if I remove that, right, automatically adjust for me. So already right there, that's incredible power. So we can, we can add, easily add and remove buttons from the uh, storyboard without having to manage a whole bunch of different constraints. The only constraints we're really managing, the only ones that we have are uh, with the stack view and whatever the parent view is. So we get a whole bunch for free, a whole bunch of like functionality for free. Uh, again, adding, adding buttons, um, changing whether it's vertical or horizontal, whatever, without having to do very much work. So that's really the power of the stack view. Uh, in the next episode, we're gonna keep building off of this uh, we're going to see how we can actually start adding buttons at runtime. Oh, all right. I'll see you then.